This is the Anything Goes Project video stream. Please be patient, the show will begin momentarily. Remember, the show can be reached via email at stalkermailbox at gmail.com, or simply call in and leave us a voicemail at 361-433-5739. If you like the show, please subscribe and leave us a rating. This helps the show to be seen. More video streams can be found on the Anything Goes Project YouTube channel. To help the show, subscribe and like the channel. The Anything Goes Project can be found on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Castbox, Stitcher Radio, or anywhere you get your podcast media from. <laughs> You're listening to the Anything Goes Project. Interesting topics, interesting things, real stories by real people. Your host is Mike. The Anything Goes Project is a production of MMC Designs. Be advised, this show may not be suitable for all ages. Many of the topics are for mature audiences only. The explicit tag is there for a reason. If you would like to contact the show, email us at stalkermailbox at gmail.com or leave us a message at 361-433-5739. And now, on with the show. Good evening, everybody. This is Mike with the Anything Goes Project. And tonight we are back for another episode. So this is going to be... Again, a crossover episode. So, Mike, anything goes project. Robbie, take it away. Out of the blank podcast. There we go. There's no project afterwards. We're not that fancy. Awesome. And the soundboard comes in right off the back to piss off the viewers. I love it. (laughs) I know they hate those things. Unless it's the creepy music in the background. Then they're like... Dude, I'm hearing shit in my house. You know, you're hearing the music I've been playing. You know what's weird is you need those like those sound effects like when you're watching a TV show. Like mm-hmm. without it, it's really, really awkward. Like you ever seen the Big Bang Theory without any soundtrack to it? Yeah, it's kind of... Like just... they crack a joke and then all you hear is like an awkward pause. Like you know there's supposed to be laughter. And it's like, it's like watching one of those sitcoms in a bar when they have the TV like on mute. So you're like, I can tell they're doing something to pause for like a comedic effect and then there's nothing. Yeah, I get I've seen uh, one of the things I've actually started listening to. And I'm really actually enjoying them. Uh, audio podcast dramas. Uh, there's one that's called Blackout uh, with uh, Rami Malek. He was the one that just played uh, uh, Freddie Mercury in the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Yeah, <laughs> they've got a whole series. It's called Blackout. It's actually really good. And then that same company that produced that podcast with him just released another one uh, a couple of months ago called Carrier. I've been listening to that one. That was damn good. And there's a couple times I've been sitting there because they've got the sound effects, the background noise, and the like shit sounding like it's way over here and stuff like that. And it's like every now and then I'll be sitting there and listening to it. And it's like, the hell was that? <laughs> I decided to do a, another podcast, and it's, it's in the works. Um, I don't want to give too much information, but it's about 15 minutes long per episode, and it involves just eating cereal, mostly raisin bran. Yeah, you need, okay. but, but not even like regular like cereal with milk <coughs> in there. We're just going to do it dry. Okay, so is this like an ASMR type? No, 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 no. I'm not associated with those weirdos. I'm, I am in the raisin bran cereal business only. I okay. guarantee to you, though, it's going to get more views than my own podcast. That's the sad thing. Are, are you going to do it with just you sitting there eating Raisin Bran? Yeah, no, no, no video or anything, just audio. Hmm. And exactly. like, I'll do like, I'll do like a, <coughs> like, like, like a cornflake or something gets stuck in my throat. Yeah. Make hey. it authentic. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're going to get sponsors. Right. Raisin brand, sign me up, please. <laughs> It'd be funny if that podcast ended up having like a million views a day. I guarantee you, I will be like, like with Trump, I'll be beating the president. Yeah. I listen to your podcast. Let me tell you something. At three o'clock in the morning when I'm reading tweets, there's nothing better than hearing a person enjoy a nice bowl of raisin brand, especially without any milk. I'm like, right? 
Yeah, it's, it's a fiber. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we are here tonight. Where are we going? I don't know. I was kind of hoping you were going to take direction, Magellan. Okay. Well, I know from chatting with you today on the phone, the direction we're going is going to be a little bit different than what the listeners and viewers are used to because tonight Enough cryptozoology for the first hour let's talk about some ancient history type folklore bro that's what we were going to do ancient ancient folklores and then i'm going to bring in some texas urban legends can i throw in some just urban legends in general why do you always have to do something with texas uh well because there's so damn many of them i'm one i did texas isn't that cool just because you guys i, own I did that from louisiana the other night yay just because you guys own more tigers than all of the world somehow well i, I did some from louisiana i've done some uh there was actually one from maryland a while back that i did and it, is this the goat man uh no damn i don't remember what it was pretty sure it's the goat man because the only one we have out in maryland is uh is like the cousin of the um, new jersey devil yeah uh the well actually you monster. might be surprised if you actually google urban legends and then your state because there's hundreds of them that come up for like, have you have you heard of the pope lick monster the what the pope lick monster it's got a really funny name but this one it doesn't it it is it is not is one like of a the lake monster no, 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 no. It's literally like the cousin of the Jersey Devil. The weirdest okay. thing is where its territory is, is on like a two mile stretch of straight, but it's like a bridge, <coughs> but it's a railroad on that bridge. So there's no way off of the bridge. Once you're on it, you have to walk the complete miles. So uh, that movie, um, Stand, yeah, but you know that movie Stand By Me, like where they were chasing by the train and shit. There's, that's how people die. That's how, yeah. that's how the thing kills them. It's out in Pennsylvania. What happens is they go and explore because you have to be on the bridge to find this cryptid. And people recount hearing noises and stuff. There's only been one survivor. And the only reason he survived was him and his girlfriend were on this bridge. The train, this train started coming by. And they went and jumped off. The girl was killed. And the train like hit him in the arm. And like he now can't use one of his arms. But he was hanging on off the bridge, basically. That's how he survived. Under the trestle. But it was, it's ridiculous. Like, you hear that shit, and it's like people go really, really far to try and discover something. Yeah, hey, no joke. Eh, the, uh, I actually got told about uh, uh, Urban Legend the other night. One of the uh, TikTokers I told you I was going to bring on, his name is uh, Greg Runge. He's an older gentleman, <clears throat> about my age, got a, got a really nice looking beard. And, uh, but he's going to come on the show, but he told me, he said, dude, you need to check out the dead zone. And I was like, what? He says the I four dead zone. It's right here in the area we live. It's, he said it's a two mile stretch. He said, supposedly when they were building the, uh, the road, they dug up a bunch of bodies that were actually buried along that road that these were people that had died of like, <coughs> tuberculosis and shit like that from back in the day and they were just unmarked graves and he said that that road man all kinds of crazy shit happens on there phones don't work in that area all kinds of stuff and he said there's cell towers everywhere he said but you hit that road you'll all of a sudden your phone will just go dead that's why they call it the dead zone oh they call it the dead zone because you couldn't get any signal that makes sense so, yeah and also that's where the dead bodies were found yeah, that's true. I mean, hey, if it looks like a body, you probably want to name it after that body. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really – it's an interesting one. I was looking at it, so I think I'm going to save that one for when I bring him on the show. I think we need to look at cryptozoology a little bit more serious, but at the same time, we should also be fascinated by ancient history a little bit. I think isn't folklore like a type of cryptozoology? Uh, no, it's not necessarily. Like I guess – uh, folklore would actually fall into the realm of urban legends for that time period. Cause I guess, but I mean, folklore is like, it's the same thing. Like people want mystery. So it kind of chalks up to the whole reasoning for cryptozoology. You're creating it more in a modern way, but see, the thing is people are going around and it's a very few people saying like, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. It's like, yeah, then you look like a nut job. And when it's considered like, I think when you look at folklore, it just changed to the name cryptozoology. I think, on the I think basis it's just, 
a change in terminology, the names. Because, I mean, you really think about it. Urban legends, cryptozoology, folklores. They're all telling stories about something that can possibly be a supernatural entity, creature, or undiscovered animal or something. So, I mean, urban legend is just, it's just something that's a new terminology that's come up in the past since the uh, 1980s. I think the 80s was when they started using the term urban legends. Well, it's the same reason we had candles and now we have lamps. It's just <laughs> a whole new form. But evidence coming out now makes the word cryptozoology lose less steam than folklore. Yeah. Folklore sounds a lot more powerful, mystical, a little bit more ancient. You know, I was fascinated. Like I, I have a huge passion for Greek mythology. So I like to think of that a little bit too. Also, like you look at Norse mythology, those types of things. I think it's the idea of like they're modern day superheroes or they're old school superheroes. But like we have a fascination nowadays with superheroes. So you look at Thor. He is technically a god. So you look at how we use him as a superhero in the Avengers. I mean, you people want superpowers, sadly. We do. I don't, we're not, you know, as a child, what was the one power you wanted to have? And most kids, I want to be able to fly like Superman. Exactly. And a lot of people say, read minds. Let me tell you something. You don't want to read anybody's mind because you don't want to know what they're thinking all the time. I learned that by watching the movie with Mel Gibson. <laughs> where what a woman wants. All the woman's thoughts. Yeah. And then next thing you know, he's like, it's too much. It's too much. Yeah, that was, it was really creepy. I actually did pull up a story on ancient Greece. If, uh, it's on Pandora. Okay. What about so, Pandora? Well, I was just letting you know, I did pull up a story for that. Cause since you said you wanted to go ancient folklore. Well, don't leave me hanging. I don't need no dramatic pauses. Hop right into it. Okay. Well, cool. Well, I'll read directly from the story. Most people are familiar with the creation of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, but the story of mankind's creation in Greek mythology is probably less well-known and is arguably darker in tone when compared to Genesis. To begin with, men and women were not created at the same time. Men existed before the beginning of women and, degen and degenerated over the years. And the creation of the first woman, Pandora, was not a gift by the gods to man, but a punishment. The five lives of mankind in the Greek uh, myth of creation, as recorded by Greek poet Hesiod's works and days, the 8th century BC, there are five ages. The first of these was the Golden Age, where men were immortals and dwelled on Olympus. They were made of gold and lived like gods. When this age ended, the men became good spirits, which watched over the mortals. The next age was the Silver Age, uh, where men made silver and still dwelled in Olympus. They were, however, no longer immortal. The following two ages were... Uh, following the two ages was the Bronze Age, or the Heroic Age. In the former, men were made of bronze, while in the latter, the earth was populated by heroes of Greek mythology. Both ages were brought to an end by constant wars. The last age, which is the present one, uh, is the Iron Age, where men toil and suffer in all their lives. As the myth in uh, Hesiod's works are not arranged entirely in chronological order, it is difficult to pin down which age of mankind Pandora was created. The story of Pandora, however, is intricately linked with that of the Titan Prometheus. Who's ta right. let, me, let, me, let me say something here. How much do you know actually about Pandora without uh, reading that? This whole thing. This whole thing. I've okay. read a lot on Greek history and stuff. Actually, that was one of my favorite topics when I was a kid was Greek mythology. And well, do you, know, do you know who Prometheus is? Yeah, Prometheus uh, was one of the Titans. No, nah, you know, he was a god, but um, Prometheus actually he stole get the him. fire from Zeus and gave yeah, it. Yeah, but hold on, hold on. He's uh, he wasn't actually a Titan. Um, he was actually a like a lower class, like what you would think of um Hestia. When in Greek mythology, Hestia is the goddess of the farm and graze. She was sit always known in books to be sitting in stories to be sitting outside of the Olympus, like the temple of the gods, mm -hmm. because she didn't have a throne for herself inside. One of the things she wasn't considered one of the thirteen major gods so prometheus was like that but the fact was like there were only a couple of titans or lower gods that were considered like that and there's the main one that everyone looks at 
Atlas, the guy that holds up the world. He has been disbanded and punished by Zeus to literally have the world on his shoulders yeah. for this huge amount of time. Prometheus, I have a fascination with because we always counter up everything that humankind has either gotten or done. <coughs> we give it to a bigger credit. We give it to like a God or we give it to yeah. something that that's how we got it. And Prometheus was the one that stole the fire. But a lot of people don't know is that he actually married Pandora. Like I, th this is one of the books I, I, I had. A, the only thing I could read back in school was like <laughs> comic book versions of folklore, like Mayan type stuff. So I was really fascinated with it mostly because it was only like 30 pages long, but it created like a comic book with these really cool illustrations. Like the only place I've been able to find them is at my middle school. I will go back and steal all those books because they were so awesome. But she, he actually, Prometheus actually married Pandora. And before it became a box, it actually got changed. Like uh, it was during the Renaissance era. It was a um, jar at one point. Yeah, dude. And I'm like, it, so many things shape and turn into different things, but a lot of people don't understand. Like that was supposed to be like the four horsemen type things of Christian mythology. Like mm -hmm. you, like she released curse upon the earth and left hope inside this jar. So mankind just got all the bad shit. We didn't get any of the good stuff. And I hear that. I'm like, man, I want to know the guy that was sitting there thinking of this and creating all this. Cause like, I have like I get fascinated when I hear stuff about Aristotle and hear him about how he's introducing like a lot of our fascinating stuff comes from Greece like a lot of people yeah. don't even realize. And well and yeah you just basically went over what this whole thing says too. <laughs> it goes through I'm sorry, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off I just hey, I, like, nah, like man. when we hit when we hit on uh like Greek mythology and stuff I I dude I've read so much on it my teacher was like what are you going to do with all this useless information I was like I don't know write a book maybe like write a book like why greek mythology is better than any modern day religion we you know, have today. It's, it's interesting you did mention that like the curses and everything i'm just gonna go ahead and put this to the side for right now save it for the urban legends the old religions. but uh the greek mythologies are really cool because i've studied pretty much all of the abrahamic texts of the uh christian faiths uh judaism the torah all that stuff I've studied all those. And then you can do a cross comparison between the Greek texts, the uh, Sumerian texts, the ones that have been translated, because many of them are still in the process of being translated. They're, it's a lost language. Some of it is. And you, you compare some of these different mythologies and stories, and you can see where every major religion in the world has borrowed from its predecessor to make theirs like uh you've got the story of the apple in genesis well that actually comes from an ancient babylonian story which was borrowed from a, a, the, the zoroasters and so i mean the, it's really it's really a neat way to start breaking down the major myths religions and faiths throughout the world because each one has come through a phase and you can link them all back together where mankind is like you know what that one was cool. We're going to start our own. We're going to take the parts that we liked from this one and bring it over here. Dude, I think when you look at religion, you got to look at the biggest picture possible. <laughs> and think that every single religion that has this strict way of like what it is, how it was created, I think everybody's getting bits and pieces of the puzzle because everything hits so closely into relation when it comes to the afterlife. It seems like everybody has like a different way of getting there and a different way of like coming to the end. But big picture is always a like happiness and like complete fulfillment. Like I think everybody's getting a piece of the puzzle and it's all part of one big picture. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's why I said, this is what some, these are topics that I've studied throughout the years and in the process, Greek mythology came up. I can remember I spent an entire year studying nothing but Greek mythology. And then I moved over into like the Abrahamic texts and I've even the, the Quran, the, the Torah, the, uh, then I started studying like the Germanic texts. Those are the ones I find really fascinating. The, uh, the Edis and the have them all and stuff like that, because those, you know, it wasn't one of those damnation fire and brimstone type books. It was literally just wise wisdom, words of wisdom. I think if I had, so if I had to ask you like sticking on the basis of Greek mythology, um, 
wh- what kind of God, like, who would you want to be the son of? Or, yeah, who would you want to be the son of? Uh, of the Greeks? Yeah. None of them, because they were assholes. <laughs> so, but if you had to choose, I mean, everybody's an asshole, so choose one. <sighs> Everybody would say Zeus. I'm like, no. No. Because he had bad temper. I would say Hades. Why Hades? Because nobody messed with him. They just He was down in his hole and it just... Everybody made him. fun of him. He didn't even have a throne. The yeah. only fact was like he learned how to survive. See, this is what I always found. But he is, yeah, this is why it would be cool to be the son of Hades. Because guess what? Make fun of me. Do whatever you want. Eventually, you're going to be in my realm. True, and also He's laughing now. In some of the dead, so. <coughs> See, I always found it fascinating when you looked at like the Greeks and the Greek gods and how they got their power was all based on the fact that they survived off prayers and like people building statues to them was they had their ultimate power. But then eventually, when mankind started questioning religion and started questioning the gods, um, mostly because they weren't answering a lot of their prayers, they started taking down their statues. And a lot of their statues became deformed just from people breaking them and smashing them. And the more that the people stopped believing in them and praying to them, the more, the weaker they got. And the only person, God, that actually didn't need their prayers was Hades because he learned to feed off their suffering, which was like a lower level of the power. But it was more like that's why he was all black. That's why like he wore all black. If you know, everyone chalks up his persona to being just literally death. Like you think of the Grim Reaper wearing black robes. Mm -hmm. That was Hades basically. Like his hair was gray. He talked in like a like a like an old man kind of voice. He was he was just seemed as a little bit weaker, but he was just as strong as Zeus. But the only fact was he learned to feed off the fear and all their insecurities. And the gods only learned to live off their love. I think that's when you see the benefit of like, if you watch Wrath of Titans, Hades was the one that saved Zeus, gave him part of his power and st- stuff like this. And it's the whole aspect of like, you know, it's it's dealing dealing with the cards that you're given. You know, if I was going to choose a god to be a son of, I would choose Poseidon mostly because of my fascination with the water. But also... I have a real fascination with Hephaestus. Um, He was known as like the ugliest god only because he was basically born out of spite. He was born by Hera that tried to get uh, one of like a son, um, but just really to get back at Zeus because he had Athena that came from his head out of like a massive headache. Just she just bursted from his brain. It's just really, it's ironic, huh? Yeah, it's really strange. And then she happens to be the god of wisdom. I didn't see that one coming. I definitely didn't think she was going to be the god of freaking claritin but like (laughs) you know you see that and then it's like he was he there's so many different versions of him like there everyone but each version he comes down to being the ugliest god but he marries the goddess of beauty which was nuts like it's like if you're a one out of ten and then you you marry a ten like what just happened how was that girl in love with that guy but he was jacked like every statue of Hephaestus was like ripped and a lot of the Greek statues were obviously ripped and very bestowed um but like his the reason why he was like above like he was more muscular than Ares the god of war who you think would be you know physically the most fit god because he was just you know battling war all this stuff that's what makes you strong it's athleticism but Hephaestus had a different form he was obsessed with the fact that he was good at creating things he constantly worked in the forges and worked as a blacksmith creating mm-hmm. weapons for the gods creating everything their armor he was known as like the guy that came in clutch to get your weapons or whatever you needed and he was working in the iron so much his skin was burned his hands were rough and he just was like just ripped from constantly working at the irons and his son um one of his kids uh Daddyless, the the famous uh inventor like making all those things like the labyrinth that like was a way to lock away um the titan chronos and like you had to go f- go through the labyrinth and you know the labyrinth from uh greek mythology with the minotaur yep like this is stuff that was so fascinating i was digging down rabbit holes and it kind of made me understand the concept of why people can stick to religious and like christianity type themes <clears throat> because i i think it's all about what you want to believe in and i started looking at this like holy shit like i'm soaking in a lot of information but also how you look at the tools back then and a lot of the stuff that was going on, it was the starts of irrigation systems. It was the birth of architecture in Greece. Like 
you saw mm-hmm. so many different things that were just like revelations to what we have today. Yeah. And we don't see those. I mean, you look at like the, the Parthenon and stuff like that. Uh, we don't see structures like that in today's society. The, the, the pyramids. I mean, it's almost about the pyramid. It's almost like humanity went through an enlightenment and then got fucking dumb again. We started taking drugs. That would be well. So basically, we're gonna came in, and the Beatles told us about an octopus's garden, and we needed to find out. What yeah. So basically, the 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 stoned ape theory. <laughs> <coughs> we I, we found shrooms well i think it's the fact that people realized what uh mcdonald's was putting into the mcnuggets and they're slowly doping us <laughs> oh conspiracy the weirdest thing though oh i find is that like how these people seemed like they were a so far ahead of their time even for back then and even today they seem like they're way like leonardo da vinci was working on building a robot an automatron like he was the one Mm -hmm. using pulleys things and he his invention list goes on and on man like he's looking at stuff that was like the first clock and all these types of things like helicopters uh just yeah but it's like it seemed like someone was coming in from the side and giving them a little glimpse into the future and that was what I kind of mentioned to you was it were these people's minds wired differently? Maybe they're tapping into something that a, a, a universal knowledge. The, what could that be? What though? we call like the Akashic record. Yeah, but what could that be? We don't know. Like, were the, did they meet aliens or did the fact hey, that. Hell, if I'm, no, I'm dumb as a fucking rock. I couldn't tell you what it is. But like the same thing, like, was it their nutrition? Was it. Was it the way they were living? It seemed like they were more open to the world where we're kind of disconnected. It's really, really strange, man. Cause like, I can't, everyone talks about like, you don't know how hard it would be to live in the past. Yeah. But they managed if, you know, you, you stripped down all the technology we had today and just set us out in the middle of the woods. How long would we actually survive? I bet we wouldn't make it like the first month. Yeah, I'd make it. I grew up on that kind of crap. Survival is junk. <laughs> I'm I'm not talking about like no tools at all. You had to build all your own shit. We're not giving you a pocket knife and sending you out into the woods. Yeah, I know how to make a knife. I know how to make know how to start off with like a flint knife and how to actually make it and do all this stuff. This stuff that I learned how to do as a kid. Survival stuff, but I mean that's beside the point. I mean, these people were doing it back then and making their tools, making these great monuments and feats. And I mean shit, I just look at some of the sculptures from the uh the greek era and they're 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 astonishing how they were done the down to the minute details and we don't they're all ripped yeah and we don't see things like that in today's society we've got freaking concrete molds of things and they're just they're bleh <laughs> you know what's funny is that all those greek statues you think of that are white they actually have paint on them yeah they I, saw, I, heard, the years. I was uh I've, i was listening to something about that where they were talking about they've painted them uh to kind of preserve them well no there's paint on them before it just faded off what happened was they took a black light and they found that there was a there's a there's bright purples on them and what happened was they actually painted clothing on them actually the one game that actually gets the correctness to it right is this one game i play that happens to deal with um like the gods and all these types of things and they actually had the statues are like gold and they're like they're they're like they're it's like tan paint on their skin and then there's like bright purples for the dress Mm -hmm. and i'm like what why does it look like that it looks so weird but i'm like no we're only seeing what it is today like it's been thrown through the fucking ringer yeah well that stuff's worn off throughout history i mean it history uh, the weather elements and things like that that that'll actually destroy paint look at what your house does i mean i have to paint i had to paint my house a f- couple years ago because it was fading so i mean just uv well, lights you look at greek mythology like nobody even understands like everyone has a fascination <coughs> is there a sunken city of atlantis out there that was a whole idea created by plato mm-hmm. now you look at that now the god that runs all of the Atlanteans that created that whole race. Do you know who that god is? No, it's not a, not off the top of my head. His name is Triton. Oh, Triton. Yes, He is now. the son of Poseidon. Yes, now you I know. know that. And he's the one that, like, Poseidon's the one that 
his his kids were cyclopses his kids were like krakens his kids were like the weirdest sea creatures and monsters you could ever think of Mm -hmm. now this is where i kind of dived a little bit off from greek mythology when i started looking at that because i started looking at the kraken sort of looking at things of this sort and then try to skip over like a, maybe a couple like a thousand years or so to a more a closer to the more modern time period when we start dealing with pirates and their fascination i mean a lot of people think like oh christopher columbus sailed the ocean blue and da, 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 yada, 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 yada. okay but did anybody ever talk about the trip and the voyages that it took and all the materials and things they had to deal with while they were at sea going batshit crazy thinking they were seeing women like mermaids out to the sea and swimming out to go get them and then dying and drowning. I mean, we know the lore about sirens singing people or pirates to their death, like men to their grave. And the whole idea was they were on a ship, (coughs) nothing but other guys for months. Nobody's known how to masturbate yet. As far as history knows. Yeah. They knew how (laughs) they're sitting there going, Oh my God, I'm next to this guy for months. I wish I could just see my wife again. And next thing you know, they see a mermaid out on the water. You don't care if it's half fish. You know, even if the bottom half is fish, you're still going to go over there and find what you can do with that. I mean, that's what made them go batshit nuts. In the same time, like they're looking for gold and there's ships that have sunk because people say they had too much gold. You're like, what happened? They sunk because they had too much gold that they just didn't decide to throw the gold overboard. No, because that idea of losing that money was worse than death. Yeah. Because that was something they were going to bring back to get, get their prestige and their, their power. That just fascinates me because it's like we talk about how mankind has a power to consume and a power for more. And that power for more can go over your own life. Yeah. Well, we look at people who uh, want more and more and more within uh, business societies and stuff, and they're willing to break laws in order to get this more that they want. The embezzlement, uh, it's human nature to want more, especially if you're, you've had a taste of that power, of what that more can get you. What types of things, I mean, would, want, would you be able to do now that would cause you to sacrifice your own life besides your children. But like, what type of possession do you have? Do you even own a possession that would, you would sacrifice your life for? I don't have a single damn thing that I would own that much or want that much. If someone gave me a million dollars, I would not sacrifice my life for it. If someone told me to jump off a bridge for a million dollars, I wouldn't do it, even if there's a chance of survival. Because money's not that important to me. Yeah, but it's well, been a, it's, it's, that it's, way with me. But you think about it, if uh, of these people that have, killed themselves because they've lost their material objects. The type of people that go into fear factor. Yeah. You want to drink horse semen for $20,000? Yeah, I'm going to pass. I'm good. That horse can keep his stuff. But that was a thing on, that was a, that was a thing on fear factor. They drank yeah. horse I think they Stomp. actually, uh, that episode ended up getting uh, pulled. That was the episode that took fear factor off the air. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I heard it was. I think it was actually on Joe's show. They were talking about it. Yeah, he was saying that was the one thing that ended it, and he was like, "I said I'm done, not doing that anymore." Yeah, he said, "Now we're just getting into the extreme." He said, "I can understand nasty foods that other cultures actually eat, something that we would think is nasty." He said, "But now we're just going to how far can we push this?" How, how far can we test what people will do for money? And let me tell yeah. you, sometimes there's lim- – I don't think we have limits when it comes to what we would do for money. People will do some crazy shit. Mm-hmm. Like become an assassin. Become an assassin? Yeah. You think about it. What do assassins do it for? They want their money. Hired hitmen. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're not going to – they're not going to do like- it for free. They feel like that's the only thing they can do, though. Yeah, still, they're not going to do it for free. Yeah, true. But I'm also not going to pee on people for money. <laughs> Actually, that might be an easy job. Oh, shit, if somebody wants to pay me $100 an hour to pee on them, great. Yeah, I've got a 40-ounce whole... Slurpee. I mean, hell. Yeah, we got a whole slice of tea right here. Two grand right now. Yeah. Shit, if somebody wants to pay me $2,000 to sit and listen to me talk for two hours, I'm here. <laughs> well let's try and keep it entertaining what did you want to focus on 
uh, well, no, I wasn't necessarily focused. It was you asked me what kind of topics I wanted to talk about. And I was like, well, my normal stuff I talk about. Saturdays, I usually talk with an individual, uh, and I've already done that show with you. <laughs> we talk about you. But just right now, I've got some uh, urban legends that I've got pulled up already. Well, let's hear them. Don't keep them mystery. <laughs> well, you know, uh, what was it, two weeks ago that I did the uh, urban legends on the Black Eyed Kids? And the reason I brought that one up, I'm bringing that one up tonight, because we're talking about Texas urban legends. Well, the Black Eyed Kid, the Black Eyed Kids urban legend actually started here in Texas. It was a reporter uh, in Abilene, Texas, that actually supposedly had an experience with them. And he wrote about it. And now all of a sudden, this phenomenon is being reported all over the world. So that's, that was why I wanted to touch on this. And it says, children are creepy in context. So urban legend, so any urban legend, including black-eyed children, is bound to turn some heads. In the late 1990s, a journalist named Brian Bethel was working in his hometown of Abilene, and he encountered something that he'll remember until the day he dies. He was parked outside a movie theater when two children knocked on his window. For reasons he couldn't understand, he was completely gripped with fear. He rolled down the window, and the kids asked for a ride back to their house so they could get cash for the movie. His fear made him hesitate, but the kids were persistent. They kept saying weird things like how they weren't armed or anything like that. Once Bethel looked back at the kids, he was terrified to see their eyes had turned pitch black. They started screaming at him that they, would only, that they could only come in the car if he invited them in. He quickly drove away. As a journalist, he spread the word and was surprised when other people wrote back saying that they had had experiences with a similar situation i i find that one interesting because of that simple sentence that he said that they told him we can't come in unless we're invited yeah well i hear you knocking but you can't <laughs> yeah it's really weird because you think about a lot of like monsters or types of like urban legends folklores like let's think of dracula Vampires can't go into your house unless they've been invited into your home. Yeah. It's like, sir, you're immortal, and you kill people and suck their blood out while they sleep. And you want permission to enter my house? Yes, that would be very interesting if you could let me into your house. It's like, ah, uh, no. And shut the door right Because away. a lot of times these legends, when they, when they are first created, there's got to be some way for the humanity or the good guy to be able to survive this. It wouldn't be that fun of a legend if Dracula could just do whatever the hell he wanted to, just storm through your house without ever asking and just kill everybody in the room. No, you. there has to be something, and I feel this falls a lot on like uh, religion, religions as well, is he is going to tempt you and you're going to willingly have to let them in. I think the fact, like, the only thing I really became fascinated with when it comes to urban legends or I think Frankenstein, dude. Frankenstein and Bigfoot. I don't know what the, what what I find so passionate to go and try and pursue these things farther. I think the fact reanimating the dead is something that's pretty nuts, and creating a scientist, an average day person that's messing, doing things with electrical eels and trying to dig up corpses and experiment on dead bodies. I think it's a fascination with the ability that people always want to be seen as immortal yeah. and want to try our hardest to live on forever. Uh, immortality that's something like what well, you and i discussed a while back that's something that people are chasing well why are we chasing it if nobody's happy in the life that they're living now why would we want to be immortal who's to say well, i'm not happy well most people yeah most people yeah that aren't eating tacos for dinner and, and, and talking about cryptids all day and that have a new i have a new uh, staff member on my in my studio <laughs> did you get the little video I sent you? Yes, I did. I was like, what the hell is happening right <gasps> now? My, my dog has one of those things. <laughs> I saw this the other day. The chicken. For those of you who are seeing it, that's my new studio mascot. I saw that the other day. I was driving to town. I was actually going to pick up my daughter uh, at, from the hospital. And uh, I saw that at 
the store and I was like, oh, I'm buying that. My wife's like, why are you buying that? Because I'm so buying Why not? Yeah. I'm an adult. I make money. I need to buy things for myself. <laughs> so the video I sent you, uh, yeah, I also sent her one today. <laughs> so she texts me back, you're retarded. And I went, but did you laugh? Exactly. She goes, she goes, yes, I laughed. I said, my job is done. I have completed my goal for life. I can uh, achievement life. unlocked. Wife laughed. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. I think it's crazy when you look at so much shit that there is that people just don't even take the time to realize what's awesome about this world. Like yeah. if you really think your life is pretty bad, just start reading into cryptozoology. I mean, there's 2.8, no, 2.2 million species left undiscovered on, on land and then 6.8 left undiscovered in the water. There's no way that that thing that you think is not out there isn't out there. Yep. And hey, if you're, if you're down, laugh. Have you ever heard of melon heads? Uh, that sounds familiar. It's like a group of children, apparently, that have these freakishly large, like, alien okay. life like heads. But apparently, there's, like, two different stories on them. Like, one was that they were, uh, like, a bunch of, like, adopted kids that were kind of adopted by a scientist that did a weird experiments on them. And they were, they were supposed to be known as some... Uh, some kids with like a giant disease that affected their cranium that didn't cause an, in, an inflation of the brain with like a certain amount of like liquid, like, mm -hmm. like back, like kind of fluid in the head made their heads abnormously large. And um, they were known to be experimented <laughs> by the scientist and then killed by, or they killed the scientist and then escaped out into the woods and they would do like inbreeding and things of this sort. And people would always talk about seeing these freakishly large heads. Like there was a couple who said stop their car in the middle of the night and they thought they saw something in the front of them in the roads so they get out of the car with headlights on and walk in front of their car the next thing you know somebody got into their car backed away and drove off and as they were seeing the person drive by they saw like this weird creature with like a freakishly large head and they chalked it up to just these rabid inbreeding like people that were just in the woods with these freakishly large heads and then people started calling them like aliens and all these types of things yeah There's small and deformed but their heads were so enormously large yeah well when you asked me earlier about urban legends why i'm so fascinated by them i commented back to you and i told you i said the reason i like urban legends is because a lot of times there's a nugget of truth in there something that has the reason for the creation of the urban legend and like the melon heads one that's an urban legend type thing well I'm, I'm going to read this one to you real quick. This is an actual urban legend here in Texas, but it has a, a little core of truth to it. It says, if a legend is believed, you don't want to go to the old Bexar County Hospital. There, a murderous spirit wandered the halls, killing patients in order of their room number. It started in one ward in the hospital where patients kept asking about a particular nurse. The staff checked security cameras and found patients were seemingly speaking to no one. Then patients start dying in their room number order. Now, this urban legend is most likely based on the real life Janine Jones, who was a worker at that hospital, and she poisoned, as far as they know, up to 50 infants during her time there and killed them. Yeah, well, they say that's an urban legend, but that wasn't that exposed as true? No, that's what I said. That's the nugget of truth behind it. The urban legend. Oh, shit. I think I get what you're saying. You're saying that. Urban um, legends are built on something that actually did happen. She was an angel of death. She actually killed 50 infants there. And now that because of that, there's, there's this urban legend that people are, that are dying in this hospital are being killed by this murderous spirit. So, like I said, you've got your, the white ladies. Okay, there's a nugget of truth behind that. Yeah, somebody may have actually jumped off of that bridge to their uh, committed suicide because their, their fiancé left them at the altar. But then community starts talking and the tales get built and, and, and get expanded upon. And we exaggerate. And then you have the birth of the legend. And it's the storytelling thing. It's the storytelling. The you, you tell a kid something and he goes and whispers it to a bunch of people. It gets spread and gets changed along the way. Like there's always a nugget of truth. Now I see what you're talking about. 
Yeah, now you got it. That's why I am so fascinated by urban legends and what study about the urban legend of men in black. The men in black? I don't know, honestly, because I've heard so many counts accounts of that. And it's always after some sort of UFO sighting that this happens. And these men have been reported uh even further back than Project Blue Book. Dude, it tosses me up to my favorite urban legend when it comes to like video games, and it's the legend of Polybius. You ever heard of that one? No. Polybius. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's really weird, but there was like an arcade machine that they were using to like basically CNIS test people. Like they were trying to test their education. Like what would you do with like this certain amount of choices? It was like one of those games that you would play where <laughs> you would be like, like the last starfighter. No, like there's a brick in front of the road. What do you do? And it gives you like four list of options. And it like they would just take the results from all these different questions and they would use it to kind of understand people in a way. But they were this machine like was only available for like a certain amount of time, but it was in like arcades. Like it just randomly popped up. The weird thing, they chalked it up to being part of MK Ultra. So I did a podcast on this machine and the men in black, and I was like there's been reports of mysterious black Cadillacs with no license plates and these weird strangers that get out. And when they get out of the car, they don't look like Will Smith. They don't look like these certain guys that you just don't remember who they are because they use some machine to make you forget them. Yeah, they, they're you know, described more like the guys from uh, the TV show Fringe. They're, they're basically like burn victims. Like they have no features on their face. They have their eyebrows shaved off. They have mm -hmm. their hair shaved off. They have their skin basically surgeried up. So like there's no facial features at all. You can't really tell if they're smiling or not. And they're just reported wearing all black and getting into these Cadillacs. People have talked about seeing them and things of this sort. And they used to go to these machines. And the weirdest thing about this uh, machine, the polybys, was like, it was no like <coughs> sit right next to Space Invaders and Galaga, all those little arcade machines that people would play around like the 1980s when that game kind of circle kind of broke out. And that's my was, jam. People talked about like there was just this bland machine that just said the name of it on it. There was no detail on it. The whole machine just looked like there was just eight screw holes, like, you know, so you could open it up and get all the information out. And people talked about recounting and seeing these weird men come up with a, like this weird technology, like advanced computer, and just start taking all the information out of the machine. And you're like, what? And like they were questioning people and testing them and getting results from them by giving them like basically – it, it, like an involuntary like survey test like seeing what you would do like answer this answer this survey you like you don't get that option on you, like, you get that option on your phone you don't answer it you know what i mean uh, saying, you I'm almost want to look back and almost uh attribute this to like the watchers phenomenon Dude, it, I mean, but people talk about it being with MK Ultra, and there's been a lot of shady stuff with MK Ultra. Yeah. A lot of people still chalk that up to being an urban legend. They're like, no. First of all, people talked about like MK Ultra being a very psychoactive study. Like, it did some insane drug testing on unsuspecting people, causing them to be like secret agents and shit, like doing these double forms, uh, you know, a type of mind control in a way, and also auto sensory deprivation. But when you look at this machine, like it was just randomly up in these arcades next to your favorite game, like Space Invaders or mm -hmm. Pac-Man, and then it was gone. Like it just disappeared. <laughs> and nobody said anything else about it. They just thought they took it out, but no one knew where it even came from. But it yeah. gave feelings of disorientation, like amnesia. Uh, I think it was like they were also like severe game addiction. People were just becoming hooked to this yeah. thing. That you felt I like honestly, I can't remember seeing that game because I spent many, many, many hours in an arcade. My uncle actually ran an arcade when I was younger. So I basically showed up there and he'd slap a roll of quarters on the counter for me. Just like, here, leave me the hell alone. So, I mean, I honestly, I don't remember that, uh, that game. So it would have been cool if I did, but yeah, it's, I don't ever remember seeing it in the arcades that I've been in in my years. I'm just thinking because they're like you hear accounts of this and like you're like how can a bunch of people just totally forget about a game but then you start some people are like I remember that game and I'm like dude it's like that game in Walmart like farm simulator like if you don't want to actually look for farming simulator you're not even going to pay attention that it's in the store yeah. So I'm like, that's why people don't remember it. But then there's <laughs> people that are like, I remember that game. I spent my last 50 cents on that game. You're like, what? And then they're like, yeah, it was the weirdest thing. It was just gone. But I felt like I was still addicted to it even after it was gone. I was like, yo, 
this brings into we know the government experiments on us what's to say they just did it in a video game form yeah and there's been so many movies that have actually popped up over time about these different video games are being used to to find somebody that can crack a code or something like that hell one of my favorite uh tv series stargate uh uh, Stargate Universe. Did you watch that one? That series? No, I did not. Uh, the game. It was there was a code that they were trying to crack to power the Stargate. That w- the one Stargate they could never f- uh, get powered up. So they put it in a game, and this guy, uh, MIT dropout, figured it out in the game. And it was like he finished finished the level and everything and all of a sudden the game just shuts off and he's screaming no i've been working on that for three days and this and that well he gets up and he's now he's mad and next thing you know there's a at his door and he opens up door and there's the army and the air force you need to come with us now what's your what what's your take <coughs> on area 51 mm, area 51 uh, I wouldn't tell you. They got some. They got some uh, UFO or alien type technology. Or do you think they're hiding something a little bit, a little bit more secret, and a little bit more shady? I think it's clones, bro. I'm not allowed to talk about it. What do you mean you're not allowed to talk about it? Don't give me that. <laughs> you're like the spoiler in the movie theater. Like you give me the trailer, and then you're like coming soon, and then you're like, oh my god, and then at the end of the trailer, in the year 2026, you're like, son of a bitch, that's <laughs> like nine years from now. I don't want my security clearances pulled. What do you mean your security clearance? Don't give me that. Don't give me that. <laughs> no, I can talk about Area 51 all I want to. That doesn't bother well, Let's me. go. Come on. I'm I don't know. Do I don't know what's at Area 51. I've never been in the complex. Are I've, they experimenting I've with driven people? around the area, seen the signs and stuff. So, Well, I, I when, did you, you, when did you do this? When did you do that? Because you're not allowed to do that anymore because they bought up all the land around this Area 51 because of the fact they got all these people that are saying they're going to go raid the place now. So oh, now this was probably – shit 10 15 years ago oh my god yeah or just but you can't get close to it all you can do is drive up to like the perimeters up to that one mesa where you if you got a damn good telescope you can see down there but yeah it's like these areas and stuff there uh, you can't get into it i mean these guys that are wanting to do the run on it yeah basically i'm just gonna sit back with a box of popcorn and <laughs> just watch this shit go down uh, I, it, I, I don't I don't know what's there. And I think me even saying anything is purely a speculation. I just think like they're, they're doing something, but I think it's clones. I think they're doing some like weird human testing again. Like I don't, I just, I just feel it. I feel like there's no aliens there, but I think they're doing some major like type of cloning robotics automation type stuff that we need to be kind of looking at. Like this is a problem. Because the world's going to become even more divided when these machines come over. Or we start getting into the point instead of uh, transgender. Now we're going to have start getting the technology is going to slowly start coming out into the market for transhumanism. If I had to ask you, what is your all time favorite crypto cryptozoology or urban legend favorite? What would it be? Oh, shit. I'd have to think about it. I'll tell you mine right now. My uh, Cthulhu is one of them that I really like. Isn't Cthulhu just myth, like folklore? It's not really crypto or urban legend. It's more like that, that was a fake fan fiction type shit. Like the woman that made Harry Potter, she did books like. No, it was that. H.G. Wells wrote about it. But if you think about it, I mean, you think there was a, a there, giant octopus guy. Yeah, Arcatuthis. Mm-hmm. Maybe not a guy, but there is a giant octopus. We know that. I don't know. Uh, the, I mean, for the longest time, the octopus, the giant squid and the giant octopus were considered uh, cryptids until we actually caught video footage of them. And we've actually pulled tentacles out of the ocean. The, uh, that Japanese trawler that actually caught video footage of one attacking their anchor and it tore off one of the tentacles. They got it on the ship and it was about 30 feet long. But then you got to start looking at space squids and all these other types of things that just keep, seem far out of realm. And then you start talking about the world being on the back of a giant turtle that's held up by four elephants and all this shit. I'm like, I don't know. That's a good book series, by the way. It actually is pretty fascinating. It makes you think of the Earth a little bit differently. Yeah. And uh, have you read the book series? 
No, I haven't read it at least extensively. I've briefed it. Yeah, it's uh, about 26 books to the series. And they're, they're really good. And uh, Terry Pratchett's one of my favorite authors. And uh, I really loved the fact that he and uh, Neil Gaiman got together and did uh, Good Omens. Dude, I don't know. Did you watch that on uh, Netflix? On, uh, not Netflix, Amazon Prime? No, I don't have Amazon Prime because Amazon's too powerful in the market today. Okay. I've got Barnes & Noble. I've got Prime. They're also my publisher. <laughs> what? Yeah. There's some awkward pauses. Yeah. Oh, well. We'll just have to... That's how a natural conversation flows. Exactly. <laughs> well, you, you're... you're <laughs> all this information i got 20 urban legends that we can talk about i'm like well where are the freaking urban legends you told me like okay you ready for the next one yeah in huntsville texas a stretch of land officially known as bowden road is more commonly referred to as the demon's road for all the strange occurrences that have happened on it perhaps it has something to do with the cemetery at the end of the road where people have reported seeing ghostly figures wander around at night the most popular myth includes a woman who saw a man walking around the cemetery, but didn't pay him any attention. Days later, the woman was getting into the car, and when she all of a sudden, the same man from the cemetery was there in her bathroom, uh, but quickly disappearing. So the legend about the uh, the Bowden Road is you go down, you don't go to the end to the cemetery, because if you go down there and you start provoking any of the spirits, they'll follow you home. Basically, you end up with an attachment. Like hooked onto your soul in a way. Yeah, they just attach to you. Now, here's another one. In Amarillo, Texas, there's a uh, closed school that everybody avoids. The Summit Ele- Elementary School is one of the most haunted places in town. And its dark story makes it a central hub for ghosts and spirits. There's a whole host of different urban legends surrounding the building. A few of the biggest include it was where a janitor liked to throw students into the boiler and kill them. It was a popular spot for racially motivated murders. And there are supposedly murdered prostitutes hidden within the walls of this school. Whatever happened in that building, a lot of people tend to stay away from it. It's one of those locations that is supposedly extremely active, yet there's all kinds of stories of things that have possibly possibly i'm air quoting here happened within that building i mean and and then you got arlington screaming bridge uh many urban legends are based on real life tragedy tragedies in arlington in 1961 a car packed with teenage girls plummeted off the side of a burned out bridge and killed everyone inside the legend talks about how if you stand on the bridge at night you're able to hear the tormented screams of the teenagers as they fell to their deaths. Nowadays, access to the screaming bridge is a little difficult as roads to it are now blocked off, but still plenty of people access it by foot in order to maybe hear snippets of that fateful night. And we've got a bridge similar to that right down the road from where I live at. <clears throat> it's not a uh, where a car accident or anything happened. It's supposedly that's where uh, a couple of teenage youths have jumped to their death and i feel like the only reason urban legends like some are very very like seem very very true is the fact it involves a psycho killer most of the ones that i find that are like seem the most like truth to it is based on a psycho killer yeah like candy man um like murdering Uh, kids on slender man yeah but like, you ever heard of the bunny man in the 1970s in Virginia? Mm-hmm. The guy that would slaughter bunnies and leave them under an underpass and like just have them hanging there and stuff. And yep. then he eventually moved on to killing teenagers and he wore like a bunny mask and would just go around killing people on Halloween night and stuff. I think when people think of urban legends and these types of things, they look at scary monsters and serial killers. The first thing I think of at least is Michael Myers, like the whole idea of urban <coughs> legends, like these myths, like don't go out, which kind of makes it seem like warnings like your parents would tell you if you misbehave the boogeyman's gonna come get you who's to say the boogeyman's not trying to talk to you like uh like a, like a gentleman like hey man i'm living in the basement right now 
Um, I just want to let you know that I live here too. So if you could respect, like maybe, you know, be in your bed at 10 o'clock and not be an asshole while I'm trying to like sleep, like, you know, I appreciate that. And then you get up off your bed and he's like, get back in your bed. Like, that's what it is, bro. I'm sorry. You know, I'm going to eat you if you get off that bed. So that's why the kid's terrified. Yeah. Well, uh, and speaking of ur- urban legends, as far as like other stories, I'm like, you've heard of the legend of the hor- uh, headless horseman, correct? Yeah, that's actually, it was, uh, he was, wasn't, his, didn't he get like his head taken off by a cannon? And he's okay. supposed to be running the that, battlefield. Looking yeah, he was it. a Hessian. Okay. Well, did you know Texas has its own headless horseman? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's called the El Muerto. The story goes that a man named Vidal, a Mexican bandit and a horse thief, stole horses from a ranch of a Texas ranger, Creed Taylor, in 1848. He soon discovered the horses uh, were missing and took off with a neighbor who had lost his horses in order to find the thieves, who had also lost his horses in order to find the thieves. They both ran into Bigfoot Wallace near uh, Uvalde. He agreed to join the hunt, also a ranger. He had a lot of experience and little forgiveness when it came to horse thieves. Soon after their search began, they found the horse thieves and killed them all. Bigfoot cut off Vidal's head, mounted his body firmly to the saddle of a wild Mustang. He also put his decapitated head in a sombrero and secured it with a strap, attaching it to the saddle. The wild Mustang roamed South Texas, scaring everyone who encountered it. The duo also named uh, El Muerto, and was blamed for all sorts of misfortunes. A small group untied the man from the saddle eventually, freeing the horse from its grisly rider. Though the corpse was shot many times with with, uh, both bullets and arrows and buried in a small town cemetery, people still claim to see the headless horseman wandering the plains late at night. Hmm. It's so weird how back in the day they thought of horses as being like if you stole somebody's horse, you were basically sending them to death because that was how they got their food. That's how they got their crops done. That's how they Did got their money. Did you know That's that still on tech, uh, in part of our Texas laws, you know how states have what some of these uh, laws that are like weird and outdated? There's still one law on the Texas books that they never removed that if you are caught – around somebody's ranch, around their fences, and you have wire cutters in your back pocket, you could be hung for that. Because that was what they considered somebody was a cattle rustler, cutting the fence lines. Man, I'm telling you, dude, when you think of this stuff, you got to think that, like, if you took someone's iPhone today, what's going to happen? Like, what type of urban legend are you going to be? You're going to get murdered, son. Yeah. That person can't reach that Snapchat. That's our horse now, man. That's our travel. That's our – that's our – that's how we sustain ourselves. And uh, another one of the ur- urban legends that is real popular around here, specifically in my area where I live at, Cope Settlement area, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. There's supposedly many people who have seen it around this area. We've, I, live, uh, I live right on the Lavaca River, the La- Lavaca Navidad River. And it's got little islands around it and branches off. And I've canoed up and down this thing. Uh, and supposedly there's a bunch of people that have actually seen, there's Bigfoot sightings all over the place. Actually, there is an organization in Beeville, which is only about a 45 minute drive away from here, from my house to, that is dedicated to looking for Bigfoot in this area. So. I mean, there's groups of people that go out looking for Bigfoot. I don't think. Oh yeah. Well, these, these are supposed sightings where people have had, uh, I was reading one uh, that actually showed up in our local newspaper or somebody said that whatever it was, was big, huge, hairy, came up onto their back porch, tried to kill their dog, and then stole a 50-pound bag of dog food. Well, that could be some guy's grandma, depending on where you're, you're talking about. Uh, well, we're not big, in this world. Very huge. And hairy. <laughs> Dude, what do you think about Jekyll and Hyde? That was, that's a very interesting story. I love that. It, it's, it's a, that's a uh, great representation for people. For, like for our darker story. inner side. Oh my goodness. Dude, it's what, how we represent ourselves to the everyday people. Elegant, sophisticated, classy. But when the lights go out, we see our dark demons. Ooh, dude, I'm telling you, when you look at that stuff, I see I got I, one of my all time favorite movies was uh the what's the movie with uh Hugh Jackman in it? Uh that was uh, Van Helsing. Van Helsing. That 
is a job I would want back in the day. Do you being able to hunt? That was of- actually a really good movie. I did enjoy it. I've, I had a lot of friends that were like, ass, dude, you got I, to see Wolverine kill Dracula and shit. I had a lot of friends that told me that, Oh, that movie sucked. That movie sucked. Oh God. And I ended up buying it because I enjoyed it so much. And my wife said, Whoo, Hugh Jackman, he makes a sexy werewolf. <laughs> I think all the facts that you look at when it comes to urban legends, besides being chalked up to a serial killer, it's also a lot of the really, really giant, nasty, disgusting, like the ones you would think would be like the most dangerous, seem to have a really caring side to them. Like they turn them, they give them a huge amount of humanism in them. Yeah. Like the fact that you look at Frankenstein during Van Helsing and he was like, why? Like people are trying to kill him. He's like, I just want to be left alone. And he's like, just like crying and screaming and like people are burning him down, trying to kill him the whole time. And then like when he like comes out and gets like angry, like scared, like scared, like just roars, everybody freaks out and starts running away. He's going to eat them. He's just like, I'm here to help. (laughs) I just want to be alive. I'm like, that's people today. They're afraid to help. I'm like, that's what brings such realism and gets people hooked on these types of stories. Yeah. And you remember, uh, what was it a couple of weeks ago? Uh, I don't know if you heard that podcast where I talked about, where we talked a little bit into urban legends as well. And I talked about one of the urban legends where like, supposedly if you park on some train tracks and like some little kids or something, will push you off of the tracks at, at a certain time. That's actually based on, uh, for texas that we have that same urban legend here and that's the intersection of shane and uh villamon in south in south san antonio it's the site of one of the most gruesome urban legends in texas the story goes that a train collided with a bus full of children in the 1930s the train's engineer uh tried pulling the brake but couldn't stop in time 10 children lost their lives then and there these children however make sure that no others that others do not meet their same tragic end any car parked over the tracks will be pushed off of them out of the way of any trains you can park uh you can cover your car's bumper with baby powder and actually see children's uh, handprints once they've rolled you to safety but you may not need to go that uh go that far as you may uh, you may hear the voices and laughter of the children as well so see i I mentioned that one and there's a very similar one in almost every state I've been to. Hmm. But this one actually had a background to it. In the 1930s, there was a bus that was hit by a train there, and I just hiccuped. As soon as you said there was a bus, I immediately started thinking of the song. Once upon a time, there was a bus. There was a bunch of children. That and died they- in a grizzly fire crash. <laughs> yeah right no, it's always something terrible at the end like shit this was such a happy to, song what happened whatever, whatever happened to the, all the bus trips uh magic school bus yeah. going inside the human body kids don't don't we don't need permission slips yeah we're gonna show you about vaccines i love the one where they she took the adults on vaccines <laughs> oh my god Actually, it wasn't even her. It was her daughter was driving the bus, and she took a bunch of adults to see how vaccines work. (laughs) It was a funny one. Uh, One more for you. Ellis County locals, especially in Terrell, warn against taking candy from strangers. Okay, hold on. I got a big one on this one, because that urban candy legend about people poisoning candy is fake. That is some hogwash horse. Hold on a second, though. But I wanted this is what I wanted to say because before <laughs> I, I did a podcast on this because I was always told when I was a child that like, oh, don't pick up that pixie stick from the ground. Someone could have laced it with heroin. Someone could have injected poison into that candy. There was one account, one of mm-hmm. a dad that poisoned his son for life insurance. He killed his kid and then tried to poison other kids in the neighborhood to make it look like it was a candy uh, outbreak like poisoning and the other kids did not eat it and only his son ate it and then yep. that he got that kid got that guy got locked away okay now listen to this the only other times it has ever happened is when a kid mistaked a piece of candy when it was a drug yep like there was a kid that ate a lot of, a large amount of heroin thinking it was like fun dip or some shit those very few stupid yeah. people but All right, back to the razor this. blades hold on razor blades and candy 
there were kids that were staging that. They would yeah. they would eat a piece of candy and then they would have like a razor blade and stick it inside of it and then tell their parents, I found a razor blade in my candy. That's it's a good way to get attention. attention. Exactly. Now, but this one has nothing to do with poison candy. It's back in the early 1900s, many children went missing at night. Legend has it that someone left candy on their window seals. After the, after the children ate them a few times, they received notes on the wrapper. Then suddenly, they up and disappeared. The town uh, held Clara Crane responsible, nicknamed the Candy Lady. She had killed her husband with poisoned candy after he accidentally killed their only daughter. Only uh, many believed she was involved as her, uh, as her release from the North Texas Lunatic Asylum coincided with the first wave of disappearances. Even if you're not a child, be scared. Adults have discovered rotting teeth in colorful candy wrappers. Some were discovered uh, stabbed to death. Some of the kids were discovered stabbed to death with pockets brimming with candy. So if you cross paths with the candy lady, don't take any of the sweets that she offers. Yeah, you never want to take candy from someone. Like if you go into a random neighborhood on Halloween and there was a person that were making their own homemade treats, you were kind of told to stay away from those. They might even be really, really good. But unless you know the person. That's what we, we were taken to like the little old lady that went to our church or something like that. Because she would always make us popcorn balls. And but, exactly. She but she would only give them, them out to the kids she knew. Oh, that's good. See, because there was a lady that got arrested for sticking rat poisoning in candy um, and trying to give them out to a bunch of like kids in her area because she hated how they like they like terrorized the neighborhood and played pranks on her, TPing her house and stuff. So she poisoned a bunch of treats like cookies and stuff and gave them out to the kids. And next thing you know, they were like, this is filled with like a type of poison. It smells really bad and I'm not going to eat it. And then she got arrested and stuff of that sort. But like, yeah. I think like, what was this lady leaving on the windowsill that would cause the kids to just never be seen again or leave in the middle of the night? Like, was it like, a, it wasn't a laffy tap taffy like joke was it like no you know, she was well she would the paper she would leave the the candies and supposedly these papers would have messages in there to the kids but so what I, messages do they say come get some more candy oh i thought it was like your mom's a hoe and then like the kid was like i guess my mom is a hoe and then would just r leave the house like run away yeah but no it was that's basically what it was is these kids would just leave or to go out in the night trying to get more candy they'd they'd find they found several of the kids, a uh, few of them stabbed, uh, like some of the kids' teeth, like I said, were found in uh, candy wrappers and just weird stuff like that. But It's James Woods. Yep. And it's... Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. Now, uh, you know the boogeyman story, right? Oh, yeah, dude. I did a podcast on it. He's, like, yeah. he's, he's trying to teach you about the birds and the bees. He's living yeah. in the closet to be a supportive parent. Have you uh, ever heard of the uh, Texas version of it, the El Cucuy? Okay. You say Texas version. It's not the Texas version. El Cucuy is a Mexican version. I don't know why a lot of the Texas stuff you're talking about is all in Spanish translation when it all comes from Mexico. And I realize you're right <laughs> on the border. I look right it, dead smack on look, the border, man. I had a dude from Honduras, Mexico do that podcast with me on the Boogeyman. Let me tell you something. Awesome. Spanish translation of it. Okay. Yeah, did he talk about the El Cucuy? Yeah, he. That's what we did it on. We did the El Cucuy specifically, and then we did the Boogeyman. But no, we awesome. were talking about the El Cucuy, and he did the translation for it. It's the it's the Mexican Boogeyman. That's all it is. Yeah. It was a way for kids to listen to their parents. Like you got to do your homework and be in bed, and you also got to eat your vegetables. You don't. The El Cucuy's going to come get you. His mom even makes fun of him. And says the El Cucuy. It's really weird. <laughs> well, this article says that he is the ultimate threat that keeps children from misbehaving. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, and the boogeyman, well, he doesn't even come close to the hideous creature of the night known as the El Cucuy. The beast is known by different names to the people throughout Latin America. Some of his names include Cucuy, Coco, Cocu, and uh, Kumachu, and others. Popular legend describes Cucuy as a small humanoid with glowing eyes that hides in closets and under your bed. He's childlike and somewhere between life and death. Tony Zavaleta, an anthropologist professor from Texas uh, Southmost College, 
said the shadow figure is a common myth passed between a parent and their child, according to his article in 2005 from the Brownsville Herald. Uh, Zalveta said, fathers traditionally tell children that there's nothing under the bed or in the closet, while mothers tell the child to fear the kukui. Pre-industrial societies create a uh, conceptual fear creature to keep children away from dangerous places, he said. These legends often include, uh, continue as civilization develops and new names are assigned to it. The Kukui is ours. Uh, there have been reports of Kukui sightings in places such as Dickens, San Benito, Brownsville, and San Antonio. And Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico, yeah. Puerto Rico, it's a different form. Uh, I need to get my wife's uh, uncle on the show. He's actually from Honduras. Well, um, in different uh, places like Mexico, Puerto Rico, Cuba, all these other places, the El Cucuy is in different forms. In Mexico, it's seen mostly as a small little monster, as a I knew this thing was going to work great. Back with a freaking chicken. But, but in El, in El Cucuy in Mexican or Latino uh, is more on the lines of a small little monster or a woman. And then it's also, if you look at Puerto Rico, <laughs> they see it as a giant monster like reptile figure much like an alligator like with a large mouth and mm -hmm. these types of sorts and i'm like listening to it i'm like they're all getting a grasp or a little glimpse of this monster same thing with the chupacabra where i thought it fascinating they, they, you know someone saw they saw a chupacabra was a coyote with mange i'm yeah. like that makes more sense that there was a i think there's a logical ex explanation for all that like i think bigfoot is a form of sasquatch but i also like to talk <coughs> up as not Bigfoot, like how you see the the video of the like the fake video of that guy. I chalk Bigfoot up to like this giant like monkey type thing, but he's like Smokey and the Bear. Like you light a match in the middle of the woods, it's not Smokey coming to stop you. It's Bigfoot. Like hey, the fuck you doing? I live here, man. I live here, bro. I am the keeper of these forests. Okay, my cousin is the Yeti. He is the keeper of the mountains. <laughs> we will both come down here and jump your ass. If you mess with my forest, that's what I think of. Like if it was going to come down to the Bigfoot and the Yeti in a boxing match, sadly, I think the Yeti would win because he's bigger, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Bigfoot's mystical. Bigfoot could, I always picture Bigfoot in a, a Yogi robes coming out with like a giant wooden staff. You like I said, you can, you not can watch that movie on HBO. We all know Sam Elliott's the one. He ha he killed Bigfoot and Hitler. So yeah. Hey, my uh, son watched that movie here recently. Was I it actually had... really good? Because I'm gonna actually look at it. He said it was pretty good. He said he he said I he said I was kind of skeptical at first when I started it. <laughs> he said, but what's the fact? Like it's Sam Elliott. I mean, my cousin. My kids was... don't know who the hell Sam Elliott is. Come on, that's, dude. That's my awkward. cousin was babysitted by Sam know, Elliott all the time when that. he was little. And he thinks it's a normal thing. He's like, no, it's just a normal dude. I'm like, no. My it's, Sam like, it's just a dude with a big mustache. It's a freaking, it's the stranger from Big Lebowski. How can you not like? Yeah, Sam? or or the, the dad in the movie Mask. He makes the Silverado truck commercials. Mm -hmm. You want a Ford? Well, let me tell you about Silverado. He makes my favorite memes. You're some kind of special stupid, aren't you? <laughs> I like it when um he was like on he was on the ranch and he was like, Yeah, he goes, That sounds like something on Netflix. And the dad's like, What the fuck's in Netflix? Okay, we were talking about the ranch. My favorite episode. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher was pouring some almond where's my almond milk? Who took my almond milk? Show it me the tit on an almond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. That that, in, that just sense of not non non-education <laughs> i love that yeah it was that was actually a decent show i was kind of uh, i was kind of sad uh, that they're gonna have to redo it now no they're they're uh they they lost a license to it ever since uh the danny masterson thing which i actually found out was over some scientology bullshit that doesn't surprise me danny masterson is a well-known scientologist sadly he is <laughs> But he got in something – they uh, saw what he was doing on the ranch with his cursing and all those types of sorts, and they did not want the Scientology uh, church to be associated with that, so they took him out. I was like, is that why we don't see Tom Cruise in any of those horrible Mission Impossible movies? 
Yeah, yeah so, that's right. People church. out there, I said horrible. <laughs> yeah, they were. Those Mission Impossible movies were hard to watch. They were, and yeah, it's like, oh, the first one, I was like, okay, first one. Oh, whoa, they made a second one? Oh, yay. And then it's, it's like, like Fast and Furious. Yeah, I haven't watched any of those. My buddy is buys every single DVD, goes and sees it in theater, like pre-orders his ticket, so he has a safe spot in the middle of the theater. <clears throat> and I'm like, bro, he's like, dude, I got you a ticket, you're going. I'm like, I don't want to see them do these weird things for three and a half hours it's the same shit over and over again i like how they make it newer but it's not something i would want to go see again it's like i see it once and then now they have to stop doing it and do like hobbs and shaw i'm like man you guys are taking the name and running hard with it like rocky balboa you got like rocky eight coming out and then now you got creed and all these other ones i'm like sometimes you gotta rambo. learn to let it stop yeah the new rambo that's coming out he is old as hell and still ripped. But honestly, if so, he can't do that shit anymore. <coughs> yeah. When they were filming The Expendables, you were like, damn, they're making a third one? And then, like, Jason Statham talked about he almost died doing The Expendables. Yeah. What happened was one of the trucks in the brakes, or the brakes in the truck went out, and he actually flew off a bridge into some water, and he had to do, like, an emergency escape out of the truck. It, it's... I think a lot of these shows try to monopolize on the fact that, hey, our first one did so good. Let's do a sequel and let's do it again. And let's try to monopolize on the first one again and make more money. I'll tell you, the prime Disney movie that was actually the worst for that. Land Before Time. Oh, man. Don't put me down like that. It was the app. The first movie was good. It was. But the other 25 were not. <laughs> yeah, you got to let it die at some point. Let it My die with... Dad you. died at the beginning. Let's end it. Damn it Disney. <laughs> you gave me Bambi too. Why would you shoot him in the beginning again? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, shit. We're almost running on an hour and a half now. What else do you want to talk about? Well, that was all my uh, urban legend stories for tonight. Your urban legends for Texas that originated in Mexico language. Well, just one of them. There were like two in there. I was thinking like that came from Mexico. Which one? You, there, was, there was the last one you did, El Cucuy, and then there was one, two before that. There was another one that you're like, you said a Spanish name. I'm like, but and it has a Spanish. No, no, no. He was actually, that was in Texas that he was caught. But he was a Latino. It doesn't matter, but that happened in Texas. He was killed by the Texas named, Rangers. You're not named El Chapo and you're white. If you're named El Chapo and white, your parents had some balls to name you that one. <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's like naming your kid Beowulf. Like you got to <laughs> make sure that kid's tough as nails. You can't be walking around with a kid with a pocket protector named Beowulf. <laughs> you're insulting the name. And then you would see the kid with the pocket protector and be like. That's why Heroes got did so well. Because, like, if you had a name, like, his name was Clyde. <laughs> he slayed the Hydra. It's like, Clyde didn't slay no fucking Hydra. What are you talking about? Hercules. <laughs> he slayed the Hydra. You're like, but Clyde did it. No, nah, no. Nah. It was Hercules, bro. But Hercules sat on the side and didn't do anything. Look, he's the one name that when we say, people are going to be like, that's so mystical and heroic. Nobody's going to be talking about you, Clyde. He's like, yeah. damn. Aaron's no, my, messed up. my dog is coming to the door your dog's coming to the door is that a reference to something no I, he, I can hear him outside the door he's got his nose under the edge sniffing trying to find me he saw how right I was about you know heroes having these amazing names I think one thing that really freaks or me or he out, knows I have the dog biscuits that's true and also you have a dog toy in your house that is not new, a dog now you're, toy it's a chicken I that's that in the adult toy section <laughs> that's what you chose out of the adult toy section <laughs> i feel really bad for your wife if that's the adult toy you picked out of the section you picked the one thing that's gonna cause the pants to go up not down Ooh, baby let's get it on <laughs> <laughs> i could just see you lighting candles and then like all you hear is <laughs> like really really loud <laughs> Slowly edging yourself up to the bed. 
It's like, uh, 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 uh. It's like doing my little dance across the room. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm feeling in the mood now. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, choke on my chicken. <laughs> oh God. Making it dirty now. You know who makes it dirty? <coughs> the Dirt. tooth fairy. Mm. That Coming that that house. is a freaky ass story. If you actually Coming not the to your house and taking your tooth under your pillow, or are you talking about the the the, the old primal version of the tooth fairy? I'm talking about the old primal out of your mouth. Yeah, the primal. I'm not talking about the the rock and a tutu fairy. You're talking about like the Hellboy version fairy. Yeah, that little mythology. That was a good series of movies. They messed it up when they revamped it with the new guy. They need the old guy back in that one. I haven't. I honestly, I haven't seen the new one yet. And, I have uh, not seen the new one. I won't watch it. But I heard people said that it was way too CGI'd. Yeah, and. I'll probably eventually watch it. Ron uh, Perlman I'm, is the, the original. What I'm probably. actually kind of excited for was the teaser trailer that came out today. For what? The Mandalorian. I haven't seen any of the new Star Wars. I refuse to watch any of the new Star Wars. Eh, well, you slept. <clears throat> I don't like it. I watched like an hour of whatever not an hour like 30 minutes of the, the newest one that came out. Not the newest one, the one the very first one the remake they did. It was it wasn't it wasn't entertaining at all. I I enjoyed it. Uh, I actually had pre-sale, uh, got to go to the pre-screening before it was even released in theaters. See, I, I know so many people that talk about, like, I know, I've talked to people that work for Disney, and they talk about, like, oh, yeah, like, we love all that. We go, we go all Star Wars out. The Star Wars movies were amazing because it helped my kids see something I was interested in. And I was like, <laughs> I get that. I really do. But I also start finding out a bunch of shady stuff about Disney World that makes me not really want to support them at all. Yeah, the fact that their cast is not allowed to take pictures of themselves in costume, they're not allowed to show any behind the scene type stuff. There was a woman. There's a video I saw on a Snapchat story. The freaky shit that Disney does is what it was called, basically. And she was just sitting there and screamed in a in a Minnie Mouse costume. And a guy, security guy from Disney, picked her up and took her off the park, like hmm. out in the back. And what they call Disney Park, like when you're on, that's called being on stage. And then when you're backstage, they call that off stage. They call like, you know, you still have to be dressed up. You still have to go by the character's name. You can't, you have to basically learn to be called by the character's name. You can't do certain things that are really sketchy. And Walt Disney was known to be an anti Semitist. Yeah. Well, I knew that. There are two people that supported Hitler Walt Disney and Henry Ford. Did you know Henry Ford was given the highest medal? Like it was like the Golden Eagle or something like that. Either that or the Silver Cross. It was something that was ridiculously high up in the German Army forces. And actually, uh, was it Henry Ford? Um, or in Hitler's book Mein Kampf, he actually wrote about Henry Ford, saying hmm. that he liked what he did because Henry Ford actually got a lot of his machines and a lot of his factories taken down in. Germany, <coughs> where he was producing a lot of stuff, but he also was caught producing weapons and vehicles for the Nazi party. You hear well, that? That makes you want to go Dodge all the way. Ew, fuck a Dodge. What, what are you, Chevy? I actually drive a Ford F-150 uh, Super Crew. Well, you're supporting Hitler. No, because Hitler did. This is what their advertisements do. This is what Dodge's advertisement is. You buy you support Ford, him? you're supporting Hitler. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He's not dead. He's living in Argentina. No, actually, he died a couple few years ago. Wait, Hitler, still, Hitler was still alive? Yeah, he might have staged his death, to be honest with you. There was, there was, for a while, there was a conspiracy that he actually did stage his death and actually went and lived out the rest of his days in Argentina. Is Tupac still alive? Uh, I couldn't tell you that. That's I wish people would the government would just offer like an answer to one of our questions and then everyone would just be able to answer. Like, do you want to know if Bigfoot's real? Yes. Okay. Well he is. And he's a bit of an asshole. Like, what? Bigfoot's an <laughs> asshole? It's like, yeah, Bigfoot's he's, he's not very nice. He doesn't like you coming near his woods and he eats little kids. Like, oh. And then you could be like, Hey, do we have time travel? Yeah. It's like, was Mar is is Michael J. Fox a part of this? He goes, Yeah, but he's not allowed to operate any of the machines. Why? Because he can't keep his hands still. It's like he, he uh, got the shakes. 
he got to shakes. Dude, Family Guy made fun of him so bad for that. <laughs> you understand? That? Like, I hate going to a party where Michael J. Fox is the host, and it's him carrying a tray of like wine, and he's like shaking it all over the place, and it spills it all over Peter's shirt. Like, God damn it, you had one job, you can't even do that. And he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, man, we're going to have to wrap this up because uh, my wife, I think, just got home. Well, bring out the chicken. No, it's time for me to go be the big spoon. Oh, you don't like being a little spoon? <laughs> just just on days that I'm feeling insecure. Oh, so most of the time? Most of the time. Yep. Most of the time in my world, yeah. <laughs> most of the time. That's why I have a chicken. <laughs> so, man, this was awesome. Uh, I, don't, I haven't got a clue what we're going to title this one. Random shit? Well, let's just say, let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's talk, talk about it. That's what let's it's Let's talk about it. Show details and be random shit. So, uh, yeah, to any of my listeners, if you need to get a hold of me, you can write in to the show at stalkermailbox at gmail.com. Yep. Yeah, send him dolls and weird things. Of this Actually, sort. I now have a P.O. box for these people to send me that stuff. It's uh, Anything Goes Project, Care of Anything Goes Project, at P.O. Box 455. Lolita, Texas, 77971. And if you want to call into the show, it's 361-433-5739. Again, that's stalkermailbox at gmail.com. The address will be in the details. And 361-433-5739. Robbie, give out your contact information. My name's Robbie. I like long walks on the beach. I'm a Capricorn. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You got to back up and you got to get your corduroy jacket on. Oh, did I, am I not wearing all denim Jay Leno style? Yeah, no, or one of those Hawaiian shirts. Got to have your hey, feather, you got to have your feathered hat and your mullet. Oh yeah, now I prefer a monocle like Professor Peanut because he's linked to the Illuminati. Okay, speaking of those videos, I I got a hold of a video clip a while back that actually like compiled a bunch of those dating videos. There was a dude that tried to dress as a freaking Viking in it, and he was like the dorkiest guy ever. I am going to slay. No. We're talking like, this was computer nerd. Hi, I, I'm showing show and I'm going to be, and he had on like Viking furs and a horned helmet. <laughs> that dude has stories to tell and I'm ready to hear them. Yes. So anyways, you can reach out to Robbie at <laughs> Out of the out Blank of the Pie blank. Scott. <laughs> All yeah, right. Just look up Out of the Blank. It's anywhere. Just Google it, Out of the Blank. If it, there's someone else with that name, then I guess that guy has more money than me. I don't know. <laughs> that would be pretty much all of anybody. <laughs> wow. Calling the kid poor at the end of the show. I see how it is just because ah. I don't have a famous chicken and all this wire set up. Shit. I'm poor too. What are you talking about? My kid's eating my money up. I'm poor from the ground up, son. Started from the bottom and I'm still here. That's right. I got nowhere else but to go or down when I die. <clears throat> what? All right. Well, started at the ground up. I'm still at the ground. I've got nowhere else to go up unless I die, and then I'll just go down some more. I'm in the shit. That's what it is. I'm in the shit with all the people. Oh, speaking of that, don't eat fast food. Don't eat tacos before a podcast. Got to bubble gut. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, that's it for tonight. So we're going to wrap this up and uh, just. Anybody out there is listening to us tonight. I mean, yeah, reach out to us. If you've got an interesting story, I mean, shit, just reach out to us. If you just want to chat, talk, or I mean, hell, I always put this out. If somebody's going through a problem or an issue in life and you just need somebody to talk to reach out, we're always here for you, man. So Robbie, you got any last words you want to say? No, Bigfoot's real out of the blanks, real. And anything goes projects real. If you don't like real shit, then you're missing out. False right. reality, false perceptions, fake world. And that's it for tonight. We're out of here. Now, here comes the music. We want to thank you for tuning in to the Anything Goes Project. If you like the show, subscribe and share it. That would greatly help us out. To contact the show, email us at stalkermailbox at gmail.com. We love hearing from our subscribers and our listeners. The Anything Goes Project can be found on iTunes, CastBox, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn, and many other Android applications. 
And once again, thanks for listening. Thank you.